is I'm going to beat the crap out of the Chinese so badly that they will be forced to capitulate to me, to Japan, and become my puppet state. Because if you beat a nation so badly, you can force them to become your puppet state, and then you, uh... They become your ally, and if you declare war on someone, they declare war on someone with you, and their allies, uh, or sorry, their armies are basically your armies as well. So my plan is to make China my puppet state. And then, once I make China my puppet state, I'm going to shift all my production from, you know, my land armies to take over China to Navy and Marines so I can have the most advanced Navy in the world and strongest Navy in the world. And then when I'm ready, declare war on the United States and not only attack Pearl Harbor, but invade it and conquer Hawaii with Marines, including Pearl Harbor. Because to me, this is one of the... Japanese greatest mistakes if uh, when they attack Pearl Harbor and if they have actually crippled the infrastructure and maybe actually you know sent troops to take over the island things would have ended much much differently because all that you know the Japanese did when they attacked Pearl Harbor was destroy a couple ships and you know while that weakened the Americans it didn't weaken them you know a whole a whole ton so you see if I take over Pearl Harbor you can see all these Hawaiian islands, and most of them have um, a little anchor over them. All islands have this anchor, and that's a port. But with a little anchor, you can only move your ships to there. And if you see, you, you say you have a big anchor, like you do in uh, Pearl Harbor, you can set that island as your ship's base. And ships can only attack and transport troops within a certain range of their base. So. Essentially, if I take Pearl Harbor, the American Navy won't have any other base in the Pacific from, with to, from which to attack me besides the Pacific coastline of the United States. So if I take Pearl Harbor, the only way the Americans can actually break into the Pacific and start attacking more vital um, convoy lines and, and other structures is for them to retake Pearl Harbor. And I'll probably just stack like 20 Marine divisions on there or something, making it uh, really hard for them to retake it, if not impossible. So once I, I take over all these American bases in the Pacific... Excuse me. Gotta make sure, you know, I, my mouth is wet and I don't run out of steam while I'm talking. I and mean, once I take over all the American bases in the Pacific, I'll declare war on uh, United Kingdom and, and launch a combined Japanese-Chinese invasion of United Kingdom and India. Then take armies and invade the Philippines and uh, the Dutch East Indies and then once I take that, eventually move into to invade Australia and New Zealand. And then finally take uh, my, my armies, reform them and uh, launch a land invasion of the United States itself. So that's my long-term plan for the game. And I know lots of that lots of that lots of that is way in the future, but you know, you gotta before you can get anywhere you gotta make a plan to get there, and that's my my basic plan. So how do you play this game? This game is an incredibly complicated game and it's going to take some time to explain, and I'm sorry that these parts won't have a lot of action. It's going to be a lot of telling you how the game works and how to play the game. And there's a lot to say. But um, st for starters, the first thing you're going to see when you start up this game is you've got five... Oh, sorry. Yeah, five uh, tabs up here. Each uh, control different things, but they're all very important. You've also got... um six resources up here and a bunch of different um, bunch of different things and uh, we'll talk about these tabs first the first tab is intelligence and what intelligence allows you to do is send spies to enemy nations and see what they're up to and if you send enough spies to them you can actually uh, influence certain things and do certain things to them. So let's see here. I see I have two spies in Australia and it tells me what the Australians are researching. It tells me, um, you know, what what their uh, focus of production is. Apparently the Australians are trying to produce a stronger navy. It tells me how big their army is. Apparently they have five infantry divisions and uh, two small battleships, or two small ships. And uh, so apparently the Australians are, are not much of a threat this time. And I can go down 
and I can see uh, what Union is up to, whatever the hell Union is. Uh, I can see what the USA is up to, and apparently they only have five entry, infantry divisions as well, but they have a, a significant navy. Nine battleships, three carriers, and 57 smaller ship squadrons. And also, if I send enough spies to the United States, I can do things like I can steal blueprints, assassinate their minister, smear campaign, you know, coup nation, sabotage infantry, industry, nuclear sabotage, fun partisans, blah, 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 blah. All kinds of fun stuff I can do if I send enough spies. But I probably won't be spending so much money on spies, just enough to, I can, so I can keep up with them and see what they're up to, kind of sort of thing. I always like to know how big the enemy's army is. And technology is where you research new technologies. Very important stuff. So the first thing, let's see here, um, I'll have my first team research a uh, new infantry division, basic infantry division. So, you see when I click on the research, it has a bunch of different um, sections of it that it needs to be researched. Uh, you know, general equipment, artillery, electronics, artillery, and training. And then I can look through, I have a bunch of different research teams, and I gotta assign a research team to research basic infantry. And you want a research team that um, is skillful in most of these uh, attributes. So we can see the Tokyo Arsenal uh, is skillful in artillery training and general equipment. And they have the most uh, of these uh, sort of uh, attributes down here covered, so I'm gonna get the Tokyo Arsenal to research basic infantry divisions and then um, so on and so forth. Uh, also, a um, couple of good researches to get off the start. Agriculture is always something good to get. Uh, it increases your manpower. Your manpower is up here and you need manpower to build armies and reinforce your armies and make sure you know your armies are, are able to fight. So always, always want to have as much manpower as you possibly can and um, also a bunch of other things. I'm prob probably not going to be focusing so much on my artillery and armor, considering that historically Japanese tanks really sucked it hard. I'm not going to be so uh, worried about tanks. I might actually um, um, build some to attack the United States when I, when I do that final invasion, but not right now, so I'm not going to be worried about tanks. Uh, naval, definitely going to want strong navy so right now I'm gonna re start researching uh, improved air carriers also gonna probably have some uh, an Air Force backing me up probably not too much though I always seem to forget about my Air Force uh, I'll research start researching uh, tactical bombers and um, finally start with a new uh, naval doctrine indirect strike and I have Isuru Isuruko Yamamoto Gonna, I, I love saying Japanese names. I don't know why, I just do. But uh, he's going to help me research uh, some uh, naval doctrines. So we've got a bunch of different areas we can research. Uh, like I said, I covered a little bit before. Infantry, armor, naval, aircraft. All of which do what you'd think they'd do. And then on the bottom here, uh, we've got a little bit more abstract ones. We've got uh, in industry, which... Um, controls things like manufacturing, agriculture, oil, um, rocketry, radar, nuclear, and cartography. These are all important areas to specialize in, so you always want to have at least one or two industrial researchers uh, going on, most importantly being manufacturing and agriculture. And then we've got our doctrines. Land doctrine, naval doctrine, and air doctrine. And what researching land, naval, naval and air doctrines does is increase your army's tactics and fighting and fighting styles and organization so basically you know you can have the most advanced infantry in the world but if your infantry don't know how to fight and don't have good tactics and doctrines behind them uh, they're still gonna get destroyed in the battlefield so you're definitely gonna want to research land naval and air doctrines depending on what you want to specialize because this is gonna make your troops fight better Land doctrines are going to make your land armies fight better. Naval doctrines are going to make your naval forces fight better. And air doctrines are going to make your air, air forces fight better. So, 
Also very important things to specialize, and uh, don't forget to research these doctrines. Then there's secret weapons, and I have no idea how to build secret weapons, so I just kind of ignore them. And, uh... It's all about technology. Moving into production, which is what is, uh... allowing you to produce, uh, your troops. But the most important part is over here, your industrial capacity. And your industrial capacity is segmented into five different resources, each of which you need to allocate um, some industrial capacity to, depending on your uh, preferred, you know, area of 